Hey everyone, so I just wanted to do this uh, video on this new TV that I picked up. This is a Sony Trinitron KD34XBR960 HD TRV, uh, sorry, HD CRT TV. <laughs> Let's see all the logos on there, HD TV, what you got down here. See super fine pitch. It's kind of dusty, but yeah. So this was the last model that Sony ever made that was uh, super fine pitch tube. So yeah, pretty cool. There, there was another model of HD CRTs that came out after this that Sony made, but it didn't have the super fine pitch tube. It was uh, seven nine sixty model. It was a nine seventy, and it has a high scan tube, which is still good from what I've heard, but it's not quite as good as this. this. Okay, so, yeah, I originally recorded talking about the super fine pitch grill, but I wasn't really satisfied with what I said just on the fly, so took some time to think about it, and uh, this is probably a better explanation. So, basically, the super fine pitch grill means that there are about 1,401 I think is what I read. I, I either hear 1,400 flat or 1,401. So anyway, anyway, there's lots of, what that means is there's lots of little vertical, like very thin pieces of metal going up and down the screen, you know, that make up the aperture grill on these Trinitrons. Uh, and so basically the more of them that are there, the more the TV can then provide specific detail to each uh, grill, so or to each uh, opening, to each like space in between the um, the wires. Uh, and so, like for example, an HD signal, a full HD signal, is 1920, 1920 pixels by 1080. So. So granted, you know, this, so this can resolve 1,000, about 1,400 uh, lines of information, uh, horizontal lines, which, you know, granted isn't quite 1,920, but um, it's pretty close, and it's a lot better than any other uh, CRT that Sony ever produced, or probably anyone else ever ever produced, at least as far as consumer TV sets go. Uh, but yeah, so basically that just means that it can take 1,400 uh, pixels and display it across the screen. So, I mean the the CRT doesn't display pixels like a LCD does. Uh, but it, the but the digital signal does like contain pixel information, and so it interprets the digital signal to something that then the electron uh, gun can draw across the screen. So anyway, I hope that kind of makes sense. Basically, the the more wires you can fit in there, the more detail you get on the screen. So that's what uh, super fine pitch means. So anyway. Oh, and actually, now that I think about it, I wonder, so this is, again, me coming from the future, <laughs> but um, I wonder if that this TV has an overscan, uh, perhaps because it resolves 1,400 lines of detail here. And so maybe they over, they zoom in the picture a bit to then get more detail, if that makes sense, to have like a more native display. So like, like for example, let's say the full 1920, you know, it goes from like here to here, but then this tube is 1400, and so they just zoom in a bit, and then that's why they cut off some of the edges. Um, not entirely sure if that's the case, but it's just a thought that I just had. Uh, they could also just have overscan just because that was, you know, what you did with CRTs to hide like closed caption information or 
uh, well, I guess it was mostly just, just like, it was mostly closed caption, but just like garbage information that, you know, you didn't really want to present, you know, it's kind of a leftover of the analog CRT days, but anyway, those are my two thoughts of why there's such a big overscan, which you'll see later in the video once we get to that. But yeah, this is the future. So <laughs> anyway, back to the past. Um, I picked this up from someone who was going to recycle it. And he said it. he bought it new back in like 2004, 2005. And then he it's just been sitting in storage since 2010. So, but he said he did turn it on like once a year just to make sure it still worked, but yeah, looks like it's in really good condition though. Let's go ahead and take a look at the back. I actually have been looking for one of these for a while, and so I actually drove a total round trip like 40 hours, I think, which is kind of crazy, but our car insurance was expiring anyway, so I was like, oh, I'll do a road trip. <laughs> anyway, you can see the back here. Yeah, December 2004, model number, and here's the, the really cool part, the inputs. So, yeah, it's got all your regular, uh, you know, standard definition inputs, S-Video, composite, and then it's got component for your HD. Yeah, sorry, my I'm in the laundry room because uh, it's all the laundry machine's going right now. Um, but yeah, and then also HDMI, which has the same, uh, it can go up to 1080i just like the component can, so really cool. Then there's some other stuff, you know, for hooking up computers, or there's a cable card slot, um, probably won't use those. And then there's a digital audio output, so pretty cool. This TV actually does have a subwoofer in it though, so I'll, I'll probably just use the TV speakers. Um, anyway, uh, before I turn it on though, oh, I should say this too, so, so this TV, um, so I brought it back, and then I waited, I, I waited a few days, so I was just sitting out in the car in the cold, because I had to find someone to help me bring it in, because it weighs, uh, 196 pounds, almost 200 pounds, um, so anyway, when someone was finally able to come over to help me pull it out, we brought it inside. It was so cold that there was a ton of condensation, water condensation on the screen, and I'm sure on the inside too. So that was Wednesday, and now it's Saturday. So I've just been letting it sit inside for a few days. Realistically, probably just one or two days would have been fine, but this is such an awesome find that I didn't want to take any chances, so I can be patient. And anyway, so, um, but I've noticed it's like really dusty and so I'm actually going to take the back off and I'm going to clean it out. Um, I've actually already taken out all the screws you can see so it should be ready to just pull off and see where there, there's like these arrows and then point to where the screws go all around the sides and everything. So let's see if it just, in theory it should just come off unless I miss a screw. Well I'm going to, we'll pause and then I'll see, I'll get it off. All right, yeah, there was actually like four screws that I missed. Um, one was right here in the middle, which, yeah, I didn't see, but anyway, now it looks like it's coming off, so. All right, let's just uh, let's see what it looks like inside. Holy cow. Oh man. Wow, it is filthy in here. Yeah, definitely been in storage, I guess. It sounds like the washing machine's done. Holy cow. This is, must be the subwoofer. Yeah, look at this. Is this a pine needle? like a pine needle. Wow, I wonder if it's been outside or something. 
Well, he said it was just in his uh, basement, so. Wow, it is dusty. Holy cow. This might be the dirtiest CRT I've ever seen inside. Take one of these off. Yeah, I've never seen the 1996 Sony that I have that I took apart. Um, cleaned. That one was also very dusty, but I think this one might even be more dusty than that. It's even like spider webs in here and stuff. When I was taking off the back, there actually was a dead spider that fell off. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that is, that is very, very dusty. Let's see if I can turn on the light. There we go. Yeah, so anyway, it's a good thing I took this off. So what I'm going to do is I'm, usually I like to clean these outside if possible so dust doesn't get everywhere. Since this thing is so heavy, I'm going to probably just use like a little hand vacuum, try to get some, most of the dust with that, and then I'll use my blower to get the rest. Wow, look at that. Yeah, it's just caked on there everywhere. Wow, man, it looks like, a, like it's snow dust in here. Well, anyway. Oh, um, and actually, before we do that, I should, there, I'm like 99% sure this is discharged, but let's just go ahead and discharge this real quick. Let me grab my tools. All right, so here's my discharge tool. It's just a screwdriver with an extension cord um, on, uh, wrapped around it, and then I got an alligator clip here on the other side. So, yes, yeah, so what we're going to do is find, let's see, usually there's a metal yeah, really, I guess just any of this, yeah, this metal stuff that's around here. So this is ground. Let's just kind of clip it on there. And then what we'll do is with this other end where all the high, wow, this is so dusty. Yeah, I, I was going to do it from there, but actually let's do it from this side so we don't get dust up under there. Um, you know, this side's a little cleaner. So this is the anode cap. So I'm just going to kind of stick my screwdriver in there. I'm just going to touch the metal in there. Yep, just touch all around several different spots. Yeah, there's no spark or anything. This is completely discharged. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's discharged, so there's some of the grease on that. I know you can put uh, new grease on there, but yeah, I don't have any, so. Okay, all right, so anyway. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I'm just gonna clean. So now this, this should be all discharged, by the way. So yeah, I'm just gonna go and clean this. Um, I guess just a few points if you're cleaning one of these. So this, uh, this black paint actually helps with um, something with electrons. I don't know exactly what it does, but anyway, you want to be careful to not like scrape it off. And so, like, you can use a paper towel on like this part, but on this part, you want to use like just like really fine, you know, like brushes and stuff. Um, yeah, and then I have this. Let's see, this compressed air. Well, it's not compressed air, but it's like an air gun. Oh man, it's out of battery. <laughs> I'm gonna have to charge it. Well, anyway, that's what I'm gonna use, and then also just a vacuum to kind of get some of the big stuff first. So, anyway, we'll keep filming later on. Okay, so I just thought I'd show this real quick. This is so interesting. As I was uh, cleaning this, um, there's actually a USB cable on here. Look at that. This is inside the TV. Okay, so yeah, so it's something to do with this, um, probably this eye link. I assume, I don't know. Maybe the service only thing. But yeah, there's a USB cable coming out of here. Going off into, who knows, who knows where, but yeah, very interesting. Just goes to show how uh, late this year, TTV is where they're using USB stuff inside of here. 
so anyway, yeah, one of the last CRTs ever made. Okay, so I think I actually found the other end of that USB cable. It's right there. Looks like a USB Type-B, so that's probably going to the card reader that's in the front of this TV. So you can see videos and pictures, so anyway, I think I probably solved that mystery. Okay, so yeah, I think I got it pretty well cleaned off. It's not perfect, but, you know, it's good enough. It's a lot better than it was before, so. Yeah, anyway. Oh, and I also cleaned out the back um, plastic here. Yeah, there's still some dust in, like, these crevices and stuff, so I think when it's once it's warmer outside, I'll uh, take this outside and wash it off with some soap and water and let it dry in the sun. But yeah, for now it's a lot better than it was, so. Alright, so I put the back back on. Well, I haven't screwed it in yet, but I just put it on. I might, depending on how it looks, I might um, adjust the focus. So I haven't completely screwed everything on yet. And let's go ahead and uh, just unplug one of these, I guess. Let's see here. Okay, this is cool too because it has a thicker plug, so it's noise filter. Yeah, see noise filter. My Mitsubishi um, CRT has one of these as well. It's pretty cool. All right, let's see what happens. Hope oh, other way. Oh yeah. Did you hear that degosser? Is the TV just going to turn on by itself? Oh, yep, there it is. Nice. Very nice. Give it a second to warm up here. So, yeah, it maybe could use a little bit of adjustment as far as focus goes. Of course, it might also get better after it's on for a little bit. Here's the remote too, by the way. Turn on this light again so you can see. Yeah, it's interesting. This remote has like a control stick on it. Oh, come on. Yeah, it's like a video game control stick. So yeah, so anyway, let's try pushing like the menu button, I guess. Yeah, it actually doesn't look too bad. But yeah, I think the focus could probably be adjusted a little bit. Probably leave it on for a second. And... Oh, of course the focus looks a lot better in real life. There we go. <laughs> to focus my camera. Yeah, I like, this. I like how this uh, menu looks. Cool. Yeah, well, I'm gonna. Um, let's see here. And yeah, there we go. See, so, yeah, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna. Uh, let's let's put on like a some sort of video or something, some sort of input, and then we can kind of look at it a little bit better. Okay, I just wanted to capture this moment. Here's my. You can kind of see there, this is my Nintendo Switch. Okay, well this is the first time I'm able to plug it into a CRT directly without having to use some sort of converter. There we go. Yeah, now my Switch is plugged. Well, I guess it's the dock, but the dock is plugged directly into a CRT TV. <laughs> so cool. Alright, here it is. Nintendo Switch. Running on uh, Sony... KD 34XBR 960. Nice. Yeah, it looks really great. Yeah, the yeah the sharpness could probably be adjusted a little bit. I'm noticing on some areas, but yeah, overall it looks really good. You can see here's one of the the metal lines for the aperture grill. I don't know if it's showing up on the camera, but just like a a very thin line there. There's one on here on the bottom too, but 
not too noticeable. That's normal, by the way. Um, yeah, looks great. Yeah, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and, I guess, play a little bit and then, or maybe I'll go into a, we'll go into a focus test and see if I can improve the focus at all. Okay, so, uh, yeah, actually I'm thinking, um, I'm thinking of maybe, let's actually just play it a little bit, I'm thinking of maybe leaving it running for a little bit and, uh, you can kind of, um, maybe after having it running for a while, the sharpness will improve by itself. Uh, I'm kind of thinking we'll still have to do adjustments, but, okay, now right now I'm telling, I can tell right off the bat, you can see that there's part of the screen that's cut off, so let's actually go into the switch settings real quick, <clears throat> and uh, let's change um, the size, so then it actually, the whole thing fits. So yeah, it looks like we're going to have to just live with some overscan, which is okay, because otherwise we start to have black around the screen, and when it gets too small, let me see if I can turn on the slides so you can see it better. Yeah, so I'm thinking probably about right there. It's probably a good half a medium. So 90%. How long how far does it go? Wow, all the way down to 80. It's weird because this uh, resize feature on the switch, it seems like it changes depending on what TV you're using. So actually 89 probably isn't. Yeah. No, yeah, 90, yeah, because then it, yeah, the 90 fills up the screen completely. So I'll leave it on that. That should be a lot better. And then uh, while we're here, let's just see what. So yeah, we're in 720p because it's on automatic. Um, you can see, yeah, see. Because when you change the resolution, so like now we're gonna put in 480p. So now it's 480p. And that actually does look blurrier, so. Anyway, keep it in 720p. Um, yeah, the switch doesn't do 1080i natively. Um, I do have a converter that can convert uh, 1080p to 1080i with uh, very minimal lag, if any lag at all. Uh, but that's okay, we won't, we won't mess with that right now. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, besides the, um, the screen being a little blurry, it actually looks, like, really nice. Like, the colors are really popping off the screen and stuff. Um, I have a, a Panasonic HD CRT as well that I'm actually replacing this with. Or, sorry, I'm replacing that with this one. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, anyway. This one so far looks a lot better. In fact, let me just look at something real quick. Yeah, so even like on Ganondorf's face, I'll do another comparison video comparing the two TVs. Um, but yeah, a lot of the blacks were just being crushed on the Panasonic HD CRT. So anyway, now one of the things that I've heard people complain about on this TV is input lag. So I'm just kind of curious uh, what that's gonna feel like. So let's just go ahead and Try this, I guess. Actually, let's get King Kirby or like. Let's kind of see what the input lag feels like. Let's do like an online match. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of a. Like, it, it, it reminds me of like a really big HD CRT, or sorry, a, like a PC monitor. Yeah, so just like in this practice practice area. Yeah, the lag doesn't really feel... I can't really notice any lag at all. Um, I was watching another video that someone did, and uh, he said he actually uh, measured the lag on this TV with a time sleuth. Um, it was either this TV or it was one of the models that are really similar to it. Um, but yeah, he actually found that 720p only had 14 milliseconds of lag, which is less than a frame. Um, and 1080i actually had like 30. So the 720p, according to his results, I'll have to do my own test, but um, yeah, 720p was uh, like a really good spot for, uh, for having low amounts of lag. Yeah, and, uh, yeah I mean, yeah, I don't really notice any lag. Maybe, well, yeah, there's a little bit maybe. I'll have to, I'd have to do like more tests. Like, like uh, hook this up to hook my switch up to a um, like a just an analog CRT monitor. 
Ah. Oh no. Yeah, anyway, but like, yeah, hooking up to an analog CRT monitor. Um, wow, well, I'm not doing very good this time. But yeah, then that way we wouldn't have any lag at all. <clears throat> and then, I would like to get a time suit eventually. Oh, thank you. Oh, come on, man. Yeah, so yeah, time suit is obviously the best way to test this at the lag. Although, uh, supposedly on the 240p test suite on the Dreamcast. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, but yeah, on there, supposedly if you have a Dreamcast microphone, which I do have, um, that can also test sync at lag. So I guess that's something else we could try. There we go. <laughs> yeah, so see, I was able to land that, uh, um, what do you call it? The spike, so I guess the input lag is acceptable, because otherwise I don't think I'm going to be able to land that, so. Oh, wow, I'm surprised that actually worked. <laughs> I'm gonna let them fight by themselves. I'm gonna go fight out the over here. The thing is that with Falco, he has a reflector, and he always reflects my crown. It's kind of annoying. Oh, okay. Are you gonna go over here? No. Oh. Apple has like hardly any damage. Oh, this is his last life. Okay, Incineroar, are you gonna go after me or go after Fight Oh, no, you're gonna go after me. <clears throat> wow. That's surprising. Are you guys gonna team up on me? Right. I do have the most lives, so okay. Are you gonna still team up on me? I hate it when they team up on me. <laughs> oh well, it doesn't kill me, it makes me stronger. Oh, there we go. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, <clears throat> yeah, I don't really see the, it seems like the sharpness is about the same as it was before. <laughs> Falgo, what? Okay. Wow. All right. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. Um, anyway. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, so you can definitely tell the screen's a little blurry, so we'll go in and adjust the sharpness. Um, yeah. I guess let's do that and then we can uh, keep on testing it and see if it looks better. So, uh, let's see. Let's try to... Let's find... Um, I, I don't know why, but I'm thinking like Super Mario Odyssey, just like a... I'll, I'll find like a, a good um, like screen where we can like test the, the sharpness. Um, I guess they also have these like YouTube uh, videos. Anyway, I'll, I'll find something. I'll, I'll go in and test the sharpness, and then we'll take a look at it again. All right. So yeah. So uh, we were kind of adjusting the. Oh, by the way, I was saying um, sharpness before. But that's not correct. It's the focus. <laughs> 
Sorry about that. Yeah, there's a focus uh, potentiometer on the flyback on the TV. Um, so yeah, that's the potentiometer um, yeah, adjustment. It's not the sharpness setting in the TV setting. So anyway, I wanted to make that quick correction. But uh, yeah, we were messing with the focus and like I had my wife out here on the front of the screen. She was looking at it and I was on the back moving the potentiometer and um, yeah, and then I actually started looking at it too because yeah, the best setting was actually what the original setting was. So yeah, I think that the thing is that you know what I have to remember is that this is you know a CRT and so it's not going to have like as sharp of an image as um, like a digital you know OLED or LED or whatever. So. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so like, you know, like some of this text is a little blurrier, but I have watched a few movies on this TV now, and actually, you know what, let's just do the trailer, and it is quite impressive, like, like very impressive. Uh, I think it can even make like a pretty, like controversial movie like Star Wars Episode Eight <laughs> to like a pretty universally like good watching experience like regardless of what you think of this movie like this TV just makes it look so awesome <laughs> I'm actually kind of coming around to this episode um, but yeah now what I like is that first off the black levels are excellent like really really good and like I don't know just like everything just looks so amazing like I don't know what to what more to say about that but um it's not turning up too much although the sound is also like really really good on this TV like it's like probably the best sound of any TV I have um yeah uh and then something cool too is there's actually this, uh, that camera, what it's called, because now I have the screen mode. Yeah, so you can change this. So, like right now, there's black bars on the top and bottom of the screen. You can't really see them too much because the black levels are so good, but you can actually zoom, and it actually like zooms in enough where it takes away those black bars, which is like super cool. <laughs> So yeah, so now it's just like the 60 by 9 aspect ratio. Um, yeah. I, I was noticing it looks a little sharper when it's not zoomed in, which I guess kind of makes sense. But it's it's not really that big of a difference, and it's just cool to have the full screen, you know, display and everything. But yeah, anyway, this, this TV is just like so awesome. Like, I am so happy with this TV. Uh, I think that this is like the pinnacle in a lot of ways of like CRT technology. I know it can't do everything that like standard definition CRTs can do, you know, like 15 kilohertz content especially is going to be better on you know, standard definition CRTs. But as far as like HD stuff, yeah, this is definitely pretty awesome um, let's see let's look at maybe another trailer uh, let's do like an animated thing or let's do an older movie like this one this is from like the 80s right yeah 1989 hey there. so this one already is in 6 and 9 and see there's still some overscan yeah, like, you don't even notice that there's, uh, like, that it's not as sharp, you know, like, when you're not looking at that small text on the menus, it just looks, like, so awesome. <laughs> like, it's kind of one of those things you just kind of have to see to believe, but, um, anyway. Oh, and also, uh, I'll do more videos on this TV, too, like, I want to test... Uh, 480p, like coming from the GameCube and stuff like that. You know, there's more. 
that I'll be testing on this. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned for that. This isn't a definitive video on all things this TV, but uh, one thing that I did want to mention real quick. Oh, by the way, um, there is like, since the phosphors take a second to like de-energize, <laughs> there is like some ghosting and stuff that happens, which, you know, maybe you like it, maybe you don't, but it is kind of an interesting effect nonetheless. Um, but anyway, what I was going to say was that, uh, so this is the 960, which is, you know, basically the best, you know, HD CRT that Sony ever made, um, TV anyway, you know, there's of course they made like, you know, some, some good monitors like the FW900, um, but as far as like, um, oops, I didn't want to do that. As far as like consumer TVs though, this is like the best one they've ever made. So, um, but yeah, but that doesn't mean that you have to like search out this particular model. Model like there's other models that are also like super fine pitch tubes. Um, that you know maybe they don't have an HDMI port, but they have a DVI, and you can easily convert from HDMI to DVI. So. Uh, anyway, I just bring that up just because, you know, don't necessarily pass up on one of those just because, you know, you're holding out for one of these. Because, um, yeah, those are also good. I've watched a lot of YouTube videos on those ones as well, and people really like those sets. So, um, or even like, same thing. Let's just watch another trailer while I'm talking. Um, same thing, like, uh, trailer here we go um, um what was i gonna say oh same thing with like even like the high scan tubes where they don't have like the super fine pitch but they're still like you know really nice from what i've heard i i think that, that you know i don't have one here obviously to compare it i'd love to do that but i don't know if i ever will be able to because yeah, it's kind of hard enough to get one of these down here, but I don't know if I'll be able to ever get another one. But it would be an interesting comparison to do someday. In super fine pitch versus a high scan tube. Maybe like the 970, for example. Which is actually newer than this TV, but it, it doesn't have a super high fine pitch tube. It has a high scan tube, which is... Um, it doesn't have as many slots in the um, aperture grill, but... Anyway, basically what I'm saying is that if you find one of these Sony HD CRTs and it's not necessarily this exact one that I'm, you know, looking at, you might want to get it anyway because I don't know how often they come up, especially if they're, like, listed as free or, like, a pretty good price and they're pretty close to you. Um, I mean, for me, I'm enough of an enthusiast that I did want to find this particular model. Um, although actually to tell you the truth, there was a, a 36, um, a, a 36, um, model with the fine pitch tube, which I almost got, but then I texted the guy or I guess I emailed him and then he said it was available. And then I waited like five minutes to email him back. And by the time I emailed him back, he said someone else had already scheduled the time to go pick it up for them. So I missed the 36 <laughs> fine pitch tube. Um, but that wasn't an XBR version. It was, so it won't have like all of the same features as this one. Uh, like, but I think the XBR features are mostly like picture in picture stuff and maybe some composite conversion stuff. Um, you know, uh, standard video stuff, which isn't the biggest still, but, um, anyway, I barely missed that 32 or 36 inch, um, four by three, um, HD set, but it was actually kind of a blessing in disguise because then it was like the next day or the day after that's when I found someone that was giving this away. So, um, anyway, long story short, um, like in my case, I'm enough of an enthusiast that I did want to get something like this. And this was my, like, 
holy grail, basically, like what I was really looking for. And so, yeah, after searching enough, when I found one, even though it was pretty far away, I drove out and got it. And now I'm really happy with it. So anyway, you could do what I did. Or if you're maybe a smarter person, <laughs> you know, just go with one that's like, you know, still has basically the same features and picture quality, you know, are pretty similar and yeah, save yourself the headache. <laughs> but yeah, I guess that's up to you. But anyway, um, yeah, watch out for more uh, videos and especially where I do a comparison of this one to the Panasonic that I have that I'm going to be replacing with this uh, Sony HD CRT. So yeah, I guess we'll see y'all later. Thanks for watching and make sure you have, have any comments, leave your comments down below. Subscribe for more videos, future videos featuring this TV and others. Other cool electronic stuff. And we'll see you later. Bye.